have American labor unions become too political? Here to offer her insights is Julie Green. She's deputy director for the AFL-CIO's political department. The AFL-CIO is a federation of the largest and most influential labor unions in the United States. Julie, welcome to The Heat. Thank you, Mike. Happy to be here. Uh, Julie, let's, let's ask you the question, are unions too political or not political enough? How would you see it? You know, I don't really think the question is, are unions too political? Unions really are just workers coming together to have a voice on the job. So when we're talking about unions, we're really talking about the working people. And working people have to be that counterweight to all the money that corporations are spending in our politics right now. We're never ever going to match the hundreds of millions of dollars that the other side is throwing in right now. But what we do have is our people power and our pre people resources. We have the ability to mobilize and get to the doors and make phone calls. And that really is the focus of what it is we're trying to do and what we're about. Politics is obviously about elections, mm -hmm. numbers, all of that sort of thing. But it's also about competing interests. And you mentioned corporations and, and uh, how you try and compete with them. They've got more money. But there's really kind of two competing narratives that are going on right now in the United States. I want to talk to you a little bit about that. Sure. One is that the corporations are these bad, evil things, and, and you hear Mitt Romney defending them, saying corporations are people too. Mm -hmm. But there's the other side of that, and we saw this in Wisconsin where the governor really took on the union, Scott Walker, and was basically saying to the voters, hey, these guys are bankrupting us. We're spending so much money on the unions, all these benefits, all these, all these incentives, numbers that we have to throw out, all this money, and really kind of demonizing unions. So these are kind of the competing narratives. Are you competitive on the playing field when it comes to competing in these narratives, or are you losing in that battle? Oh, we're absolutely competitive in this. Uh, you know, once we get our message out and we, you know, show what this election is really about and really the decisive choice that people have to make this fall, we're very successful with that. Now, we are never, ever going to be able to compete with the money as you no, as a result of the Citizens United decision in 2010. Well, uh, explain that for sure, our Sure, corporations are now, the Supreme Court essentially uh, has uh, created, uh, uh, they made a ruling, excuse me, that really now treats corporations as people. So now we have a political system where individuals can write $10 million checks and just invade our politics by ads, uh, radios, and mail. And that is really hard for our average, everyday working people to compete with. Uh, so. What, again, we are trying to do is make sure that we mobilize our members and really mobilize beyond the members. Well, let me ask you about, uh, you know, it seems to me the Republicans, you, you can go to the Republican convention, and I was back at the one in 2000 in Philadelphia, and there's skyboxes from this corporation and that corporation. You see all the politicians mingling with the corporate types. And obviously, uh, Unions have some sway over Democrats. There's been a long relationship there. But I talk to a lot of union people who feel very disappointed in the Democrats. They basically give them lip service. They don't really step up to the plate the way the Republicans do for mm -hmm. the corporate interests. Would you agree with that, and can they do more? Well, I think what we're seeing right now, especially where we are this fall, is that we have a choice to make. And we know the two competing visions for the future. When it comes to unions and where we kind of fall out, we have Barack Obama, uh, our president, who is about fairness, who's about workers having a voice on the job. And while we haven't gotten everything we necessarily would have advocated for during his administration, it's a lot better than what we have on the other side, which uh, pretty much doesn't believe unions even have the right to exist or people have the ability or should have the ability to negotiate for things like safe working conditions on the job. So there, our choices are pretty clear. But you mentioned President Obama. He's never made one speech, major speech, addressing labor issues. Well, um, are actually, you he has. No, he uh, has. He, but uh, really, he was missing in Wisconsin. I mean, really, as, as a standard bearer out there fighting for labor, mm -hmm. He really has been disappointing, hasn't he, in these four years? I mean, honestly, be honest. I think that there are definitely areas and things that, you know, we've had our disappointments with and, uh, you know, areas we wish the administration would have been a little bit more proactive and could have done better on some of our issues. But again, when we look ahead, and really this is what this election is about, the future and the choice that we have to make, we know very clearly who's on our side. But here is an, a party that decided to have its convention in North Carolina, which is by far the worst state when it comes to unions. I mean, they're the most anti-union state in the country. And the Democrats could have gone anywhere. I mean, they could have gone to St. Louis. They could have gone, you're from Cleveland, Ohio. Absolutely. That would have been a great location. Mm -hmm. How disappointing is that? It was very disappointing. Uh, but what we are, again, looking forward is, you know, what we are about, I'm, I'm sorry, is looking forward and beyond this. Uh, you know, labor has a presence at the convention or has had a presence at the convention. 
uh, but not to the tune that we have in the past. What we are, we have to be there though. The Democrats have to hear our platform. We have to show up. We can't be completely absent from the conversation. So while we may be disappointed in the choice of location and all that, we also understand that the president has his own priorities and North Carolina, I think, is a state that he'd like to sway there, so. Is there a shift in the relationship? I know that the head of the firefighters union says, I'd much rather get my, my feet on the ground and stop giving the candidates, and, the, and he's expressed some disappointment in, in the way Democrats. It's been basically, hey, we love your support, we've been elected, we may vote your way, but that's about it. I mean, shouldn't the Democrats step up and do more? Well, I don't know, necessarily know that we're going to leave it to the Democrats. One of the things that President Trump uh, uh, put out really at the beginning of last year is that labor really needs to kind of change the vision of how we see ourselves and how we position ourselves in politics. We need to invest less in, in parties and candidates and invest more in ourselves. And so that is really the shift and change that you're seeing with our political program this year. Uh, President Shakeberger of the Firefighters is absolutely right. Uh, we are investing less in candidates and parties and the traditional infrastructures, and we are investing more in ourselves and our ability to mobilize and get out the vote. But if not the Democrats, can you shift to the GOP? I mean, is there another place to go? Isn't that one of the reasons why you can be taken advantage of, in a sense? Well, I think what you see now is labor really taking a very keen eye and supporting candidates who support pro-worker issues. So that is the direction that we're moving toward. We're you know, not necessarily supporting the traditional corporate Democrats that the party supports, but we are really being more discerning about where we're spending our resources and our time. So. I mentioned in the introduction to you that uh, $4.5 billion has been spent from 2005 mm -hmm. to 2011. A lot of folks would say, wow, that's a lot of money. How does it compare with these corporate interests that you're, uh, you've been talking about? Oh, I don't think it compares at all. I mean, if you just look at what's happened in the last three months, we have uh, over $300 million that uh, has been raised for super PAC spending largely on the Republican side. Uh, and that's just over the last three months. We uh, you know, are in a political situation right now where we're anticipating billions of dollars being spent. Uh, by the time we hit November, I think I saw a statistic the other day that said uh, already campaigns have spent as much money, the presidential campaigns have spent as much money on television in the mo uh, month of July than they did in uh, October of 2008. And when you look at just you know, how impactful 2008 was and all the money that was raised, that's a significant statistic. So, you know, unions may have spent a, a lot of money over the last five years, but when we look at what we're up against, and really as a result of the Citizens United ruling, I think you're going to see that we're going to be heavily outspent this cycle. But, but instead of spending the money on candidates, perhaps mm -hmm. the money should have been spent on getting that message across. I mean, you can, can have criticisms of corporations, and mm -hmm. there were a lot of people criticizing BP after the disaster in New Orleans, but they went on with this, this PR offensive with commercials like crazy. This is what we're doing. That's what we're doing. Don't you think that, that perhaps, you know, labor, part of the problem that they have right now is just messaging, isn't it? Well, I think that's what, again, you're going to see is we've kind of made this shift into this new vision. We are investing in our messaging. That is the primary harbinger of our uh, political program is making sure that we are communicating with members, with friends, and with neighbors at the doors to make sure that we're getting this message out, to make sure that we're clearly drawing the distinctions between the two visions for the future. What's your primary objective in this election, would you say? We uh, have several objectives. The objective, of course, overall is to win, but we also want to make sure that we're educating workers uh, at the workplace. We're also working with our partners and allies, uh, non-labor organizations, to get the word out. Uh, we have a huge voting rights program as a result of all of the legislation that's been passed uh, in the last two years, if you will. Uh, again, with the 678 uh, seats uh, that switched legislatively into 2010 from Republic, from Democrat to Republican, excuse me, what you've seen is uh, a smattering amount of anti-worker uh, legislation, attacks on women, attacks on immigrants, but there also is a significant attack on the right to vote. So we are you know, making that a huge part of our political program this year. All right, Julie, thanks so much for joining us here on The Heat. Appreciate it. Thank you.